From the ENN studios, I'm John LaSalle, where we continue our coverage of the massive earthquake that has shaken Salt Lake City and surrounding areas in Utah. While aftershocks are hampering response efforts, and with the massive extent of damage now coming into focus, President Obama has issued a major disaster declaration following this morning's devastating 7.0 magnitude earthquake. We are just now beginning to learn the extent of the devastation. But the reports and images that we've seen of collapsed hospitals, crumbled homes, and men and women carrying their injured neighbors through the streets are truly heart-wrenching. While no official estimates have been released, the destruction appears to be widespread. Thousands of homes are uninhabitable, and extensive damage to schools, hospitals, and businesses is being reported. Over 80 deaths have been confirmed. Dozens are reported missing and perhaps thousands more injured. We continue our team coverage of the quake. Catherine Lowe is in Tooele County. That's right, John. We haven't gotten any information from government officials, but we are getting independent reports here that there is a lot of damage to many buildings. Much of the county is without power, and several roads are impassable because of flooding caused by water main breaks, which have flooded the roads. We've also learned that there may be extensive damage to Stansbury Park Elementary School in Tooele County, where at least 430 young children were in class when that quake struck. Some parents have told us that they've been unable to find their children and that school officials have not been helpful in providing information. A worker at the local hospital, that's Mountain West Medical Center, told me that they are being inundated with injured people. Folks are coming in with everything from minor cuts and bruises to people that have been crushed or burned in collapsed buildings. All of the beds there are full and people are being treated in the hallways and in the hospital cafeteria. It's been hours since the initial earthquake hit here in the Salt Lake Valley and continued aftershocks are causing a lot of damage. Many homes and buildings that were okay after the initial quake hit this morning are now damaged beyond repair from the continuing ground shaking. Fires are continuing to burn out of control in some areas of the valley as exhausted fire crews work with the limited resources they have left. Many of these fire crews don't have water to battle the fires as water lines throughout the valley have been damaged, leaving no water pressure. Hospitals are all overflowing with the injured and dying, and some hospital staff members have told me that they're running out of even the most basic medicines and medical supplies, such as bandages and material to make casts for broken bones. Even people who are not injured in the quake are facing a grim night. Many are homeless, the few shelters that have been set up are overcrowded, and temperatures in the valley are starting to drop into the 20s, meaning more people could die from simple exposure. Chuck Taylor in Salt Lake County. With power out, telephone lines down, and law enforcement personnel stretched to the limit, looting has become a problem. The Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office confirms that they have received reports of looting homes and businesses that were damaged in the quake. They also say that scattered reports of gunfire are coming in, with at least one deputy saying the two issues may be tied together as people try and protect what they have left. And while disasters can bring out the worst in some people, it can also bring out the best in others. ENN's Frank Montgomery reports on a group of volunteer rescuers. John, professional search and rescue workers are completely overwhelmed by the staggering amount of damage from this quake, so groups of local residents are pitching in to try and save people. Well, some of these groups are specially trained volunteers called Community Emergency Response Teams, or CERTs. They're out helping police and firefighters searching for and rescuing victims from damaged buildings, even while aftershocks continue to shake the valley. These CERT teams have been searching in buildings and all throughout areas affected by the quake. So far, they've been able to help over 100 people digging some out of collapsed buildings and offering first aid to others. That's it from here. John, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Frank. Stay with us as we continue our coverage of the quake damage and recovery efforts. From the ENN Newsroom, I'm John LaSalle.